Well, hello, everybody. Welcome. Uh, Sunday morning it is, and bright sun is shining, and it is a great day to be alive. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for uh, being with me as we go into the Word. I've got some... I I felt like once again I've been everywhere, man, and uh, I uh, there there but there is a heart passion um, message that I want to get across to us today. You see there on the screen uh, that's that's our title, just a passing grade, and probably should have a question mark. But the whole essence of what I feel like the Lord would have us to share together is. Knowing about him is not the same <laughs> as knowing him. Hey, Brother Steve, uh, it's not the same. And I asked the Lord, I said, God, really just help me to get this across today. And I'm, I'm going to give you an example, a comparison, if you would. And, and like, like a lot of times, it, they're gonna have, it's going to have flaws. It's going to have holes in it. Hello, Sterella. Good morning. Blessing. Shalom to you. Uh, and, and thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing my, uh, my messages, your, your uh, other messages. Pastor Steve, I was just watching Pastor Jimmy just before I came on. And, and uh, thank you for sharing that. And with that in mind, let, let, me, just, let me just take you, let me just take you to uh, another screen here. Uh, let me get this off, and and I, I want to show you real quick. I, th I think I've got, um, I think I've got the, uh, yeah, that's what I've got. So let me get rid of this. I've got too many things going on on my screen here. All right, get you off, and then let's go here. Now let's switch. All right, all right, there we go. Uh, you'll see. This is my. I I've just got it live. This is my Facebook page, and as you scroll down here, uh, you see uh, <clears throat> just a passing grade. And you see that, get a reminder. If you click that, then when you see this come on my timeline, it'll give you a reminder prior to. So if you get busy and stuff, it'll it'll come on your phone. And then you see the share. Everybody's has this, uh, all that are watching me. Um, and you that, that share as well, Pastor Steve, he's on here. When he does a, a broadcast, he's, he's got the share button. I want to encourage you. All it takes is clicking that share button. And, and consider, if all we had right now at our disposal was the tool of the internet to get the gospel out. Um, that's a pretty powerful tool that the early church did not have. And sometimes all it takes is sharing that on your timeline for somebody else to get it. And so that's, that's, uh, that's my little, my little lesson there. And, and of course you can go on here and you can share the, uh, any of this and come back to it later. Uh, I think you all know that, but sometimes, sometimes it's just worth sharing. Now, let me, let me give you one more thought, and then I'm going to get into the Scriptures. We're going to be in Mark 5 and 6, actually the end of chapter 5 of Mark, first chapter 6, because I'm reading in there this week, and I, I'm like, how in the world did there's so many people have, and I got that all across my face. Let me bring it down here for you. All right. Uh, knowing what the Bible says doesn't... <laughs> It doesn't necessarily change you. It may change you for a little bit. It might change you momentarily. Uh, and, and I think you'll have to agree with me on this, on this way of thinking, because what really changed me is knowing him. All of my life, I was I was taught about him. I, I grew up learning about him. I grew up uh, being more educated about him. The, the the Bible was my textbook, if you would. And as I as I grew older and I felt a call in my life, I started doing the same things. I studied so that I could. I studied so I could teach. All right. I studied the textbook. And and let, let me let me put it to us this way. Perhaps, just perhaps, if we liken church and our religious experiences to going to school, um, it's like all over Sepulpa, any any town, we we have all these different churches. But l let's let's keep it in school theme. So we have all these different campuses, and every campus they have, you know, they have professors, they have different people that are teaching. Professor, like a, a pastor. So you, you get where I'm going. So now let's look at this. Some of us have gone to the same, the same uh, campus, the same school, 
um, all of our life because, well, my parents went to the same campus and they were taught here at this campus uh, all of their life and, and then the, the ones before them. Or, or <coughs> excuse me, it's a, it's, a, it's a series of campuses and they have different locations across the state, maybe even several states. And so our parents was kind of, you know, they got into that uh, education. And so that's where we're staying. We even get to the point where it, it's like uh, uh, today, well, maybe I could start it this way. All right, students, uh, I'm, uh, I'm here to uh, teach us another lesson from our textbook. And uh, I hope you have your textbooks because see, it's, uh, it's Sunday school day. It's, it's, uh, it's the day that we are to learn more about him. Are you, are you following me? I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm convinced with all of my heart, and I can't help but get passionate about this. People are sitting in campuses across the world, across the United States, and they're learning more about him, but not having a real relationship with him. And I've got to say it again, there is a huge, huge difference in the two. So let's go back to as I started teaching as well in the campus where I was positioned, I started, I would learn because I was going to teach. So, so last night, Saturday night, I would, back then, I would study, and, and man, I'd get, get my textbook, and I'd find a place that I'd think the students uh, would learn, and they would get something from. And so then, and so, man, that was my religious duty, and you couldn't, I mean, I couldn't go out to eat. Lori and I was just, we, you know, hey, I got I to gotta take care of business. So I would do that, and then come the next morning, class day, Sunday, I would begin to teach, you know, and everybody would get their textbooks out and we'd all go through there and we'd learn and we'd, all right, chalk it up. I've been to class this week and mate, we might even come back, to, uh, t you know, tonight. We might come back Wednesday. And what we have is we have a lot of people that are learning a lot about Jesus, learning a lot about the gospel, but they're not, they don't know him. Can, can I tell you? You can know him. You really can know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The reason I put just a passing grade was I think what we do is we go through this life and we know that we've got to take this course. And so we go to such and such campus. And again, you know, that's where we've always gone. So that's where we go. And and by the way, I love this campus because, man, these concrete blocks that, that this was built with, oh, man, I, they just speak to me. I know there's some newer campuses in town, and they, they have a lot of glass, and, and they have a lot of stuff. They serve maybe the best cappuccino, but my parents went here, and, and plus, you know, these old pews, they've been here for hundreds of years, and so uh, I'm kind of, I kind of like those. I know they're uncomfortable, but, you know, they're kind of, it's kind of like a sacred cow, I guess, and I, I just really like them, and I don't know what the professor gets paid, really, but um, you know what? It's his job to teach me. It's his job to educate me. And, and I'll get in there and I'll, I'll, I'll study. I'll go through the textbook to pass because really that's, you know, that's all I'm really concerned about is I want to pass. I, I mean, I want to make heaven. I don't want to make go to hell. And so if I can just get enough in here that, that I can get a hold of a passing grade, uh, I, I think that's good enough, don't you? And everybody else, I mean, they're doing the same. It's not my job to learn about all of this. But the frustration, here's where the frustration, and I, I hope you're understanding where I'm trying to bring this to a place of intimacy with God. The frustration then comes when we start learning more about the Bible and we learn about, oh, we're supposed to crucify the flesh. We're no longer alive to darkness, we're alive to Christ because Christ lives in us. But if we're just getting that in our knowledge and it's not in resonating in our heart and we don't continue in an intimate relationship with the author of the word, the textbook that we're reading, 
we get so frustrated because we're trying to crucify the flesh by good discipline. You know, um, I know the Bible says that I shouldn't do this. And so, man, here I go, set out because I, I want to do good. And I, you know, I want to pass. And so I work to do that without really getting any deeper. And and here's the question I've got to ask us today. How in the world, at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, and I know I haven't even scared of Scripture yet, but we're just going to do what God wants us to do this, this morning. But at the end of that Sermon on the Mount, you remember what, what he said, and we won't go there. You can go back. It's Matthew 7, uh, right before chapter 8, I believe it is, where then Jesus sends the disciples on a, on a crazy mission. Don't take any uh, money. Don't take any extra sandals. Da, 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 da. But right before that, he starts talking about the people that are at, 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 a, at a given day in the future— that are going to be saying, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We, in fact, we cast out devils in your name. We did all of this stuff in your name. And he says, I never knew you. How does that work? I never knew. We're talking about we're talking about God. You're the God of you know all things. You know everything from the beginning to the end. And and he's saying he he doesn't know those people. There's another passage, and I, I'm just because I've been everywhere this week, and that's the difference now. You see, I no longer I no longer study as the professor at the campus to just teach the students. I sit at the feet of the master every single day, and not just for a given amount of time so I can say I did my religious duty, but I spend time with the master every day. Mornings are my time. You can do whenever you want. But my question is, are you spending time at the feet of Jesus, or are you just letting the campus pastor teach you whatever it is that you need to know to get by, to get the that passing grade so that you'll miss hell and make heaven. Friend, there's a whole lot more to this relationship and the blessed, precious promises of God, not only for a time in the future, but even right now, while we live here in this fallen world, God wants us to be blessed, and he wants us to have a relationship because his plan is to spend all of eternity with you. That's what his plan is. So let me show you. And, I, and I've 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 spent a little time here, and I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna apologize, but I want to show you in in just this a little bit. And I'm not gonna read all the the verses, but let me give you a different look. I've got it here on the screen. I, I know. Uh, let me get rid of that so you can see a little bit more. But Mark. Jairus is uh, uh, Jairus is a uh, he's a ruler of the synagogue and and here it is over here in the verse twenty one uh, when Jesus was passing over again by ship unto the other side people gathered to him he had a lot of crowd g- gathering around him and and this is a this is a familiar passage I know you'll remember the woman with the issue of blood for twelve years but right before that happens Jairus the ruler of a synagogue. He sees Jesus, he falls at his feet, and I'm just paraphrasing here, you can see it there, and and besought him greatly, saying, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Now, where did he get that faith? Where did that guy get that faith? Because, see, I, I know of, let's go back to the campus and the school students that have been studying about him for many years, some of them may be the majority, if not all of their life, and they still doubt. They still have major unbelief. In fact, 
they just really call on 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 him when they are in a real pressing need. Well, Jairus was definitely in a pressing need. His daughter's about dead. She's lying there, and he knows that if Jesus doesn't get to her, she's going to die. And the verse goes on, and 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 I, I just want you to put yourself in in the position of one of these people. Here you are, your daughter's dying. You've come to Jesus because you've heard that that Jesus heals. And, and it goes on, and he says, And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Now, uh, they thronged him. I mean, they got, the crowd was just pushing against him. And it says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. Now, I'm going to jump real quick because you all know, you all pretty well know the story. You know the story that this, this woman spent everything she had because she had, Scripture says, a fountain of blood. And if you have a fountain of blood, I mean, you know what's going on. So, but, but first of all, my question is, we have all this crowd of people. Was this woman the, was she the only one that had a need? She's the only one our Bibles record, our, our transcripts record, that went after Jesus. And, and here's what she said. Remember what she said, by the words of our mouth, we get blessing or cursing, life or death. Remember that. And here's what it says. It says, a certain woman had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered. So, sounds a whole lot like today, doesn't it? But rather grew worse. Then when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press, in the crowd behind, and touched his garment. For, she said, if I may touch but his clothes, her declaration, my friend, was, I shall be whole. What kind of declaration are you making today? And what is it based on? Is it based on, well, I know Pastor Mike has said, if you'll do this, this will happen. We've kind of reduced God and his word to a bunch of formulas. Well, my professor, uh, he's got a new way of, of looking at this, and uh, you ought to hear him. And uh, I don't go anymore, but I can, he, he has online classes just like this. It, it, he has online classes, so uh, we don't even have to... You know what? We don't even have to go to, to go to church. We don't have to carry our Bibles anymore uh, because, well, it's it's given to us on the screen, and and here it is. We get all of our courses online. How about you? Get all of our and I'm not. I understand. I mean, I love having you here, and everybody's going to go. Well, is it, what is the bell off of here? No, but what I do want us to understand is that as long as we continue in that vein of just an education, just passing a grade so that we can make heaven someday, we're missing out on the greater blessings that God has for us. The more I spend time at his feet, the more I understand the scriptures. There was a time when I would go into the, to the scriptures to prove a point, perhaps, there was even times when I preached topical messages. I, so I'd come up with a really neat title. There was a day and time that was really cool, you know, the better title. And I get some pretty decent, just a passing grade. That's, that's a pretty good title. But I didn't come up with that and then substantiate the word to meet the title. Now it's reversal. I'm sitting at the feet of Jesus, and I'm spending intimate time with him, and then he brings these things to light, and it just then all of a sudden makes sense. So don't reduce God to a formula in this is the kind of, this is the way you pray, and it'll get results. Uh, we've, we've reduced God to a prayer list at times. God's way more than a prayer list. And, and listen, when, when I pray, I pray throughout the day. In fact, all day long, I'm talking to Jesus. We're talking. We're spending time with one another. I consult him on the smallest things. And I may not fall on my knees, go to my face, get a prayer shawl, but I may very well go, now, Lord, I'm about to walk through that door. If you don't want me to walk through that door, can you help me just to know? Can you give me one of those nudges that the Holy Ghost does so well? 
so let me let me get back in and we'll we'll close. I I I don't I don't want to spend too much time. I don't have much time to spend because I'm going to the um to to meet at Beams of Light in person and I want to share with you a song that will just bless your socks off. And so it says she said this, all I need to do is touch his clothes, verse uh, 28, and I shall be made whole. Now, verse 29, and straightway, there's a lot of straightways, immediately, straightways, all throughout this. But it says straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And and you go on through here, and, and you know, she shouldn't even have been out in public with the blood with the blood situation, you know. What are you uh, doing outside without a mask on? And, and I mean, all kinds of stuff that, that, that is going on through here that I, I don't have time to, to go through. But this whole situation disrupted Jairus, who started out this whole deal of, hey, Jesus, I need you to go to, my daughter's dying. Well, this woman cuts in line if you would, and she touches his clothes, but she's healed immediately. And I love what Jesus says. He says, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. I want. I, I don't want to, yeah, yeah, maybe I do, disrupt your, uh, your, your doctrinal thinking for just a moment. But Jesus didn't have anything to do with that as much as her faith had everything to do, she said with her mouth, all I've got to do is touch his clothes. I don't even touch need to touch him as a person. I just need to touch his clothes. And I don't know what she had to do to press through that crowd in order to touch the garment of Jesus. My friend, sometimes it takes desperation before we will push past ourselves, before we get past our comfort zone. Because a lot of times that's what's going to happen today in a lot of the campuses across our nation. Everybody's going to come in with their textbook or just wait for it to be thrown on the screen. And we're going to let the professor share a little bit more good from us for us. And, and then we're going to go on our merry way and, and nothing changes. Nothing changes really for, for, for much of, a, of any length of time because our heart's not getting in line with the word. Our mind is not being transformed and we're being renewed on a daily basis to God's word because we're just trying to pass the course. I got to tell you, I, I, there's way more in me than just passing a course. In fact, I so love the Lord and he loves me. In fact, that's what 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians, what is it? 8, uh, 1 Corinthians, I pull my, bi, uh, my bifocals off there. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 8, 3. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. <laughs> that's why that's why the love of God it pulls us even and that same scripture talks about even when our heart condemns us God knows better because sometimes I'll be thinking of something that I tried to do with the right intentions and it just fell flat well God knows my heart he knows your heart and if our heart doesn't condemn us then it goes on in that same first Corinthians 8 and it says we have confidence with God Oh, God help us to have that confidence. So let me let me finish this. What happens is after she is made whole, two guys from Jairus's house where the daughter's been lying sick comes to him and says, Hey, why even trouble the master? Your daughter's dead. Well, Jesus heard those words and Jesus countered it. Jesus countered death with life. Instead of speaking death and going, oh man, I'm, you know, Jairus, I'm sorry, you know, but hey, this woman got healed, so thumbs up. We, you know, let's all cheer. She got her, she got her, her, her fix taken care of after 12 years. Aren't you happy? No, Jesus says, don't be afraid. What does he say? Be not afraid. Only believe, my friend. The more I know him, the more I trust him. Sound like a song. The more I know him, the more I trust him. Nobody can convince me that Jesus is not alive and well. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. I hope he lives within your heart today. I hope that your journey is more than just passing the grade and getting out of here by the skin of your teeth and making heaven. I hope it's way more than that because 
the storyline goes on, these events continue where Jesus goes and, and people are wailing and, 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 you know, crying and mourning over this, this, this girl that has, has died. And then he, he tells them she's not dead. She's just asleep. And they, they, they laugh him to scorn. They go from tears to ridicule. They laugh Jesus to scorn. I'm thinking, do you not, you don't know who this is that you're talking to. And then he goes on and he just speaks to her. She rises up and now it says they're astonished. Matter of fact, it says they, they were astonished with great astonishment. <laughs> and then he goes on. After this, he goes back to his own country. And this is what I'm going to finish with today. The song. He goes back to his own home. And there are those people, th those people are going, Man, nobody talks like this. Nobody has this wisdom. Nobody can do these miracles and stuff. But then they, they again, they, that tongue gets in the way and they reverse all of the good by saying, hey, wait a minute. Isn't this the carpenter, the son of Mary, uh, the brother of James? And he goes on and, and his sisters are right here with us. And the word says they were offended at him. And then he goes on, and it says, and he, I think I've got it where you can see it, maybe he, here. And he, yeah, let me get it so you can see. I'm not making this stuff up. Okay, there you go. And he could there, I hope you're, I hope you're not at a their place that I'm talking about today. I hope you're campus is not a their place where we're just going through the motions and just uh, just teaching the manuscript. I, he says, and he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. My friend, there's a song that I'm, I'm going to end with. And uh, Joseph Haberdank and uh, Rodney Griffin wrote this song. The Perrys are singing it. They're over here on, they're over here on my computer on this side. Check it out after we, we get off. Just look up um, If You Knew Him by the Perrys, the ones that are singing it. And maybe that's where you're at. You're just wandering in the darkness. You're just going through the course. You're just... Listen. I've stood where that stand is just going through the motions and no longer because I know him <laughs> I know him like I've never known him and you can too you can know Jesus push the stuff aside see that's what he'll do if you'll just take one step toward Jesus He'll run to you because he's waiting today to run to you, to live in your life on a moment by moment basis, not just be there for your class to get a passing grade. He wants to live in you right now and for all of eternity. God bless you. I love you.